My name is Daniel Inskeep, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how much my wife's fitness channel earns in AdSense on YouTube. About two months ago, I posted a video comparing the revenue generated by this channel to that of my main channel, Mango Street. If you haven't watched that yet, I recommend you do so now because I go a little bit more in depth with each metric and why they're different between channels. Now, if you just want a refresher of those stats, here they are. At the time of filming that video, Mango Street had 542,000 views for the last 28 days with over 1 million subscribers. Mango Street's CPM was $12 and the CPM for this channel was $26.77. This channel had about 24,000 subscribers with 268,000 views in the last 28 days. Mango Street had earned $1,885.59, while I earned $3,054.76. So with 49% fewer views, I earned 62% more. Since the video topics on this channel demand a higher ad rate because they are about finances and making money online. Now, when I put this video out in September, my wife's fitness channel had just recently enabled monetization and she wasn't really earning more than a couple of bucks. Yeah, oh, don't say bucks, that's not ladylike. However, now that her channel has surpassed mine in subscribers and she's getting more and more views, I thought it'd be interesting to see how her earnings stack up to Mango Street and this channel. What's interesting about a fitness channel is there is so much more potential for videos to be watched over and over again by the same people. If we think about our channel Mango Street, where we demonstrate photography techniques or show behind the scenes of a shoot. If you're interested in that topic, you might watch that video once, maybe twice, but you're probably not watching it more than that. Whereas if it's a workout video and you enjoy the workout, you may be doing it multiple times a week for several months, depending on your exercising habits and goals. If we look at one of the biggest, if not the biggest fitness YouTubers, Chloe Ting, her most viewed video has 267 million views, which is just insane. It seems pretty obvious that people are watching her videos over and over again, which makes sense. So while the fitness space online is generally a pretty crowded niche, it does show there's a potential to get a lot of views, even with a smaller audience. You just need to carve out a small fraction of the overall fitness market, and you can start generating some pretty serious cash. Now that we know how one might be able to clock views, the real question is, how much are all of these views worth to advertisers? So first, let's get some updated numbers from this channel and Mango Street. Since I released that last video comparing the revenue between the two channels, things have shifted. My channel stats have been declining while Mango Street's have been increasing. What's most interesting to me is that Mango Street's views are only up 3% since the previous 28 days and the watch time is up 4%, but the revenue is up a whopping 31%. If you remember, Mango Street's videos are generally under eight minutes in length, meaning we cannot place mid-rolls in those videos, instead just relying on pre-roll ads. However, four of our last seven videos have been over the eight minute mark, allowing us to place mid-roll ads, which would explain the uptick in revenue. It's also worth mentioning that we've never intentionally stretched out a video to hit that eight minute mark, like many YouTubers did back when 10 minutes was the minimum for mid-roll ads. We've never been overly concerned with the AdSense generated by Mango Street and would never compromise the quality of our videos just to stick in another ad. So more mid-roll ads means more revenue, but let's see if the CPM has changed. If you remember, CPM is the amount advertisers pay per 1,000 views, but that doesn't include YouTube's cut of 45%. If we take a look, we can see that Mango Street CPM has increased by 16% from 1350 to 1534. Now, why the increase in CPM? I have no idea. For some reason, this video about pulling off a DIY photo shoot earned almost a $17 CPM, which is higher than our average, and I'm really not sure why. Okay, so now let's take a look at this channel. For the last 28 days, we can see my views are down 19%, the watch time down 23%, and my revenue is down 30%. Now, as to the decline in stats, when you're trying to grow a social media platform like YouTube, one of the key things to remember is you wanna make content that not only your audience will like, but people outside your audience will see and then wanna watch. Now, that seems pretty obvious. That's how you get people to subscribe to you. But if your initial subscriber base doesn't react positively when you post a video, YouTube's algorithm is probably not going to suggest that to people outside of your current audience. So if my subscribers are outright just not watching the video or not watching the video for as long, or maybe they're just not hitting the thumbs up button when I ask ever so nicely, hint, hint. For whatever reason, it seems like my most recent videos haven't done well in reaching outside of my current audience. Regardless, the drop in views will naturally lead to a drop in revenue, but let's see how the CPM is holding up. Okay, my CPM is down 12% to 25.49, 
which in the last video, it was closer to $27. And let's take a look at revenue for the last 28 days for each channel. I earned just over $1,500 on this channel and Mango Street earned over $2,400 in the last 28 days. And now for lifetime earnings for this channel, it's earned $7,426.02, having been monetized for about three months. That breaks down to roughly $2,460 per month on average, which is really incredible considering I only have like 32,000 subscribers at this moment. All right, so now that I've caught you up on those two channels, let's take a look at Rachel's channel. But real quick, pause this video and leave a comment below guessing what you think her CPM will be. I'll wait. And no cheating. Okay, so first of all, she started her channel on July 27th, the same time I did. But unlike me, she has been consistently putting out three videos a week ever since. Although her growth started a little slower than mine ever since the middle of October, she's been snowballing. She now has almost 44,000 subscribers with 1.7 million views on her channel. Her first full day of monetization was on September 16th, on which she earned $6.26. And we can see her channel consistently earned under $10 until October 11th, when she earned $12.67. With her channel growth snowballing, her revenue really ramped up, hitting a peak of $146.58 on October 20th. Now her CPM for the last 28 days was $7.13 with an RPM of $2.66, bringing her estimated revenue to $3,172.83, easily beating out both this channel and Mango Street. So even though her CPM is $5 less than that of Mango Street and about $20 less than this channel, she did receive over 1.2 million views in the last 28 days, crushing both of the other two channels. Almost all of her videos are over the eight minute mark, allowing her to put mid rolls in, coinciding with breaks in her workouts. In the middle of one of those videos is one of the few times I'm really glad to see a mid roll ad because I'm usually trying to catch my breath. So you may be wondering why her channel started to snowball in October. Well, other than posting consistently good workout videos three times a week, she also launched a free 30 day workout program where people get an email with the day's workout plan and healthy habits. This motivates people to consistently watch her videos. She also creates community posts here on YouTube about three to five times a week. And those posts contain workout playlists containing three to five of her videos. I think those two strategies really helped increase her views and then since it performed well with her audience, it was then recommended to people outside her subscriber base. Her highest earning video is a burn 500 calories video, which is a 30 minute workout. It's super challenging, but it has generated almost $1,900 with almost 690,000 views. This is the video that started being suggested to people outside her normal subscriber base. So her lifetime earnings for this channel is $3,888.94. And now here's a final comparison between all three channels for the last 28 days. It obviously took her a ton of work and a ton of effort to get her channel set up for success, which is why I recommend if you're looking to start a YouTube channel, make sure it's a niche that you're passionate about. Don't go into a niche just because it has a high CPM, because if you're not passionate about it, you're going to hate all the time you spend working on it. And that passion is not going to show through in videos and you're gonna have a hard time growing a channel. Rachel has the low CPM rate out of all three channels, but because she put in the extra work to consistently put out three videos a week and then put in the extra effort to help her channel snowball, she out earned the other two channels. I hope this video gave you even more insight into how much channels on YouTube can earn. Do me a solid and hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.